Well, hello everyone, Dan Herb with Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. It's winter time. We can't get out there prospecting right now. But remember those black sand cons I got from Tyler's mine way back in the summer? Well, I still have them to process. So let's go into the shop and see what kind of gold is hiding in those black sands. Wish me luck. And I hope you enjoy. Well, here they are, the black sands I got from Tyler's mine. Now, these aren't necessarily concentrates. This is the black sand he removes from his cleanup sluice with a magnet as it's cleaning up. He has so many magnetics in his cons that it will plug his sluice. So he runs over with a magnet, pulls out all the black sand, and then processes the rest. As he pulls out the black sand, this stuff here, it catches gold pulls the gold out, and in this bucket is actually a fairly significant amount of gold. He usually runs this stuff separate to recover it, but in this case, he gave it to me to bring back and process myself and have fun and see if there's gold. Now, this material is a very, very coarse material. Plus, when I put it away six months ago, it was wet. And because black sand is mostly iron, iron tends to rust, I end up with these chunks of rusted, clumpy, magnetite black sand that will not process. Yes, some of the chunks are really big. We actually have to go and break that down into smaller pieces using machine before I can process it. Now magnetite, what black sand is made of mostly, being an oxide of iron, usually doesn't rust because it's already oxidized. But sometimes there's other processes going on in there. Maybe a little bit of free iron, maybe some sulfides of iron that are breaking down. Sometimes, if left wet, black sand concentrates can rust and they stick together, trapping the gold. Those we have to break down. And also the particle size here is fairly big. Oh, wait a second, what's that? I wonder what that yellow shiny bit could be in there. <laughs> Anyhow, running this black sand through the crusher will powder those bigger chunks better, making it easier to recover the gold. Last time I used a rock tumbler to crush it down, this time I'll be using the impact mill. We're going to run it through the mill and get powder out the bottom. It'll also break down some of the bigger, chunkier black sand that's in there. And for removing the magnetics from our crushed concentrate, we will be using the Roly-Poly Magnetic Separator from MiningMagnets.com. Magnetite being magnetic will get captured and taken away. Gold being non-magnetic will stick in behind. And then a quick panning job and we should get the gold. We just got word. My son is going to university this year in Regina, Regina, Saskatchewan. And we just got word that is minus 52 degrees Celsius there right now. That's a cold snap. That's frostbite. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be fine. Dusty. Yes, I know this doesn't work great with a beard, but it's all I've got right now. Well, I think I like the rock tumbling method better. That's a lot of dust. Yeah. Well, alrighty then. I've done about half of the bucket. Yeah, it's about half. And that is what I'm gonna run today. The other half of that bucket is going to go into the material I make my hardest pay dirt, pay dirt bags from. So this is all black sand cons from a sluice run on the Fraser River. I'm gonna add 
the rest of that to those cons. This here will run today through the magnetic separator. All right, all set up. Need to give it some height, so I set it on a block of ocean picture stone. Why not? A couple jars, one to catch the magnetics, one to catch the non-magnetics. Uh, the speed control's plugged in. We're all ready to go. So we're running the magnetics, or the cons, through the uh, magnetic separator here. This thing uses a spinning magnet inside a tube that flips back and forth, flips its negative and positive, positive and negative, back and forth, which rotates the magnetics up and out of the way, leaving the gold or non-magnetics to fall directly down. So the magnetics are rotating over the top and falling out one part, the non-magnets, once they go in the top here, they just slide straight down and follow up the other port. And because it flips the poles back and forth, the material in here is jumping up and down, side to side, rotating around, and freeing up any gold that might be caught in it. So that the gold goes down the one side, the magnetics go down the other. And looking at the bins right now, I'm saying I'm getting 95% of the material coming out in the magnetics and less than 5% coming out in the non-magnetics. And that's because this material was all collected from Tyler's sluice box using a magnet. So it was pulling up basically all the magnetics. Unfortunately, when doing that wet, you sometimes grab gold with it. That's what I'm getting today. I had to turn down the speed some on the speed controller because uh, it was spinning so fast it wasn't giving a chance for the magnets to fall and they were building up in here. So just turned down the speed a little bit, gave it a bit more chance for those uh, magnets to fall into their jar, which is almost full. They also show off the flipping action there. I was talking with a close-up camera right in the whole port here, but I don't think you can hear me. I think the microphone would pick up nothing but the machine. Anyhow, what I was saying is a slower speed will also maybe show that flipping action a little bit better in here because the particles flip back and forth a little slower. But yes, they're coming out better. have to empty that jar right away. That jar is full. There's hardly anything in the non-magnetics. So it's probably like 99% in there. That was the end of the material. It's all in there now. Let's get one more shot of things flipping around before we shut her down. got that guy full and that guy not so full not so much one thing I should note is there's a lot of garnet in this material too so a lot of this will be crushed garnet the non-magnetics now I could run this through again make sure we didn't miss any I could run this through again make sure that we uh, get all the magnetics out but nope today let's go pan let's go see what we got all right here we are sitting in the kitchen with the cons and a pan and what do you think about me taking over your kitchen? Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, there's usually rocks everywhere anyway. So. <laughs> pan in the kitchen.
Oh, look what Dana's doing. She's putting up new uh, things for the store. Check this out. Look at that palm stone. <laughs> Anyhow, back to panning. Let's get her all wet. Shaken down. Okay, I can see things floating already, so let's get some jet dry in there. This is gonna be a long process. Hey Dane, how cold is Alex today? Uh, it's minus 52 in Regina <laughs> this morning. Oh, it's not that cold out here. About minus 20... Two. 22. Only a 30 degree difference. What I might do is after I pan for a little bit here, get all the mud off this, I might change out my water so that we can actually see what we're doing. It is muddy, muddy, muddy water. Right now I'm just stratifying things, getting it, all the gold to the bottom and getting that mud washed off. Not actually panning yet. Well there, it's not going to be clean water, but it's going to be cleaner water. I'm going to set the camera down in a place that can wa watch this and you're going to get to see this one pan from start to finish. Panning pure heavies like this is a slow, slow process. So if you don't want to watch the gold panning, skip ahead. Skip ahead to this timestamp. I'm going to put the timestamp on the screen right here of when I get to the final reveal. Unless you want to watch panning, of course. Some people like watching this. Some people think it's just tedious. Some people really hate panning. I find it quite sort of therapeutic. Something that I can just do quietly, slowly. I know I'm good at it, so uh, I have that sort of confidence in myself and it feels good to do something that you're good at. Sorry if anyone thinks that's bragging. I've just done a lot of it. I haven't seen any gold. Oh, as I say that, I see one piece. <laughs> Starting to get worried there was no gold in here. It's kind of double-edged sword here. I want to see lots of gold because, hey, everyone likes seeing gold in a pan. But the more gold I see here means the worst job we did when we were removing that uh, those magnetics from the sluice. And the more gold we captured, where we probably should have taken more time to not capture the gold there. But it's not like it's lost. It just ends up in this second process. So yes, I'd like to see lots of gold, but on the other hand, I'd like to not see gold because that means we lost it the first time. I've only seen that one piece so far and it's sunk itself underneath the black sands again. I haven't seen anything up front here, which is where I watch the most carefully because if I see anything coming up into this area, I know I have to take the whole thing back into the bottom, re-stratify it, then slowly bring it to the front again. But I'm guessing right now it's all sitting near the back. And remember, this is only half the bucket. And, well, another thing I should mention is it was the top half of the bucket. And because there was water in that bucket and I drove it home over rough roads, it's quite possible that the majority of the gold is sitting on the bottom of that bucket. I'm starting to see more gold. There's a piece right there. There's a piece over here. Let's get her back in the bottom. I want to just check that that's not a piece of gold. What I'm seeing up front here. No. Fool's gold. Pyrite. Oh no, there's where I was looking at. That piece there. Make sure that's not gold. No. Pyrite. Another thing about leaving the gold sitting in the black sands for six months, wet, is it'll all be stained quite dark. It'll be a bit of an iron stain to the surface. Ooh, I just saw one piece jump from the second to the third. I see a couple pieces in that third. Probably time to settle things to the down to the back again. And then as I tip forward this time, go slow and see if I can keep all the gold in the back riffle. More water. No, some is crawling forward. Might be time for the back wash and tap method. Gold all the way to the front riffle now. I don't know if that's a piece of gold or not, so. Let's move strategies. Just opened the window to get some natural light coming this direction onto the pan so you can see it better, but hey, check out the winter wonderland. 
It's cold out there. Back to panning. I'd love to go outside to do this right now so you could actually see what I'm doing better with nice light, but have I mentioned it's really freaking cold? <laughs> so right now I'm just using the backwash method. I'm taking the black sands slowly back, and then as I get a line at the back, I suck it up. Jet dries foaming a bit. May have gone a little too much in there. Yeah, let me redo the water without jet dry so you can see what's going on. So I still have a tiny amount of jet dry in there to keep it, any gold from floating, but hopefully it won't foam up quite as much as it was. Now, do you see that? Right there, there's a piece of gold that worked its way back. Let's push it out of the way, back to the top, if I can. I'll suck up that line and then restratify everything at the front. Okay, and continue backwashing. I'm seeing gold, I'm seeing lots of gold. That crusher I have is screened down to one eighth of an inch, so it is possible to have rocks up to one eighth of an inch get through. If you're wondering why we see these bigger guys in here. Oh, I'd love to be out in that sunshine right now. If you're seeing any yellow rocks that I'm sucking up, it's not gold. There's some rusty yellow rocks in here. I can actually really well identify what's gold and what's not. Okay, you don't want to watch me do any more of this. I will turn off the camera and bring her back when I get to something a little more exciting. I've got it to the point now where I'm going to be doing what's known as the backwash and tap method. So where I'm backwashing it and sucking up anything that needs to be sucked up. And then every once in a while I tap it forward. So the gold that tries to work its way back, there's two pieces right now, walks back to the top edge. Backwashing and tapping, keeping the gold at the top edge while the black sand is still down here for removal. The piece that just ran down, that's gold. Let's walk them back up to the top. And this is all clear in here. I can go in and remove all of that. Wash back, piece of gold came forward, or down. Walk it back to the top edge. Real big line of it there. Gonna get one flake out of there though. Okay, that is good. That's a whole lot. Just clean black from there down. Now what's left in here is a lot of bigger pieces. So I, I do a little shake, a little wiggle of the pan as it goes back. And those bigger pieces tend to roll away from the gold. Now some of the bigger gold rolls away too. So I have to keep tapping it up and make sure that these guys down here, the lighter ones, are not gold. Nope. Little rock, a little shake. Get that, those bigger black pieces to come away. I just realized some of that stuff that was rolling back was gold. I guess running it through the crusher like that, I've made a whole bunch of little balls of gold and they did roll back. So, new strategy, but we will get the black sands cleaned.
I got so carried away in cleaning up the gold, I forgot to film sucking it up. But there we go. It's in the measuring cup here. I sucked up using a set of aqua tweezers. It is fairly clean. Actually, I think I did a fairly good job this time around cleaning out all the debris. Let's get dried and see how much is there. Sometimes one of the things I do to take, get rid of the water out of these is I put all the gold in one spot, then just use the aqua tweezer to suck up as much water as I can. So I know I'm not losing any gold that way. And then I dry it off on the stove. Element to high. Keep it on a bit of an angle so you're not directly down on the element. The boiling water, uh, the fast boiling water of the element getting too hot can actually spit some gold around. So just a bit of an angle so it's the hot air going up past it, not the element touching the metal itself. Give it a second. Uh oh, smoking element. I washed it last night with a dirty rag. <laughs> Oops. And don't just go until the gold is dry. Make sure the rest of your vessel, whatever you use, is dry too. Otherwise, when you try to dump it out, you hit a little dot of water somewhere and some of the gold sticks. There we go. She's dry. And don't go straight from the stove into a plastic wayboat. Otherwise, well, you melt that plastic wayboat. Cooled off some. And in that half bucket of black sands from Tyler's Mind, we had, drum roll please, 0.77 grams. Well, that was a fun way to spend the afternoon, cleaning up some gold. Still see the odd piece of pyrite in there. Oh, there you have it. Gold. Wintertime videos. I know it's not exactly what you expect to see on my channel, me in the shop, but I do what I can. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Until the next one. Bye.